Don't you sometimes wish you could just push all your problems aside and take a nap? Now what if I told you that some major scientific problems connected to emergency medicine and space travel could actually be solved by doing just that? In this video, we are going to take a look at hibernation, cryogenic sleep, biostasis and more. But watch out, it might get a little chilly. The easiest way to understand cryogenic sleep is to look at the animal kingdom for comparisons. Ground squirrels, unlike other squirrels, spend most of their lives eating or drinking almost nothing. They spent 8 out of 12 months in a hibernation state called torpor. In torpor, these animals can survive otherwise deadly conditions without excessive food or exposing themselves to danger. In these states, their heart rate, metabolism and temperature are incredibly low. So low, in fact, that their bodies require close to no nutrition under no circumstances. We humans can't really do that. Most of us need multiple bursts of nutrition per day under the best of circumstances, let alone under hard ones. By manually putting the human body in a similarly cool state to that of a hibernating squirrel, cryogenic sleep aims to achieve the same result as natural hibernation would. In emergency medicine, doctors can induce the state by using a medical practice called therapeutic hypothermia. The metabolic rate is significantly decreased by lowering the body temperature by 5 to 7 degrees Celsius. We are talking about a metabolic decrease of 25 to 50 percent. That is a significant change. Not only does it reduce waste with no movement required, but it also lowers the metabolic rate. This gives doctors more time to treat the patient's worsening state. One real life application of such was performed successfully for the first time not so long ago in something called a suspended animation. By temporarily slowing down biological functions in the body by replacing the blood with an ice cold salt solution, doctors at the University of Maryland School of Medicine have been able to substantially increase the time available to treat otherwise unrecoverable trauma patients. Lowering metabolic uh, activity or oxygen consumption, blood flow and tissue damage added up to buying doctors enough time to save the patient's life. Cryogenic sleep could potentially even allow mankind to accomplish even greater endeavors. Human space travel has been practiced for many decades, but for a long time, the moon seemed to be our limit. Distances are too long for a being with an 80 year li uh, long lifespan to travel. Moreover, human bodies are too frail to survive outside the earthly atmosphere. According to NASA, the need for excessive amounts of cargo like food and entertainment could be reduced. It would also effectively shield astronauts from harmful cosmic radiation and create an Earth-like gravitational pull by putting their bodies into specially designed pods, rendering the otherwise required two hours of exercise per day to keep the body in shape obsolete. As useful as all of this sounds, sadly we haven't fully figured out how to make it work. But history has shown us that just because we can't achieve something today doesn't mean we never will. For cryogenic sleep to be an effective and secure addition to space travel, we first have to figure out the perfect body temperature and chemical conditions for human hibernation. What comes normal to the ground squirrel has to be done manually for us humans. Our first priority will be to securely enter a deep sleep state where degradation is happening at a much slower rate and metabolic activity is low enough to sleep for a long time. NASA and Spaceworks have been hard at work since 2013 on a project called Torpor Inducing Transfer Habitat for Human Stasis to Mars. According to the scientists, the usage of cryogenic sleep in space travel could reduce the mass of regularly sized spaceships from the current 20 to 50,000 kilograms down to 5 to 7,000 kilograms, which would allow the travel greater distance with less fuel and a lower cost. Sleeping astronauts would take in nutrients via IV tube while waste is being disposed of another tube system. This stage is being kept for two weeks after which the astronauts are being woken up to exercise and prevent muscle breakdown. Then they return back to cryogenic sleep and the cycle repeats until they reach their destination. During all this, an AI is taking control of the aircraft. Another option is cryopreservation. Here, instead of slowing down the metabolic activity, we completely stop it. NASA seems cryopreservation as optimal way to conduct space travel, but considers it a long way off still. Technology to automatically preserve and safely rewarm back a human being has yet to overcome multiple obstacles. Cryopreservation is currently being done by substituting the water in the body with cryoprotectants. This prevents the formation of ice crystals once the patient has been cooled below freezing temperatures. These cryoprotectants possess some toxicity that has to be removed before the rewarming can begin and scientists do not know yet how to do this safely. For that reason, this method is currently only used in the field of biostasis. The goal is to preserve humans until medicine has advanced enough to treat the cause of death and develop successful rewarming technology. When it comes to rewarming, we humans are less advanced mammals than a regular squirrel. In the Department of Hibernation, we've still got much to learn. 
If you want to know more about current and future technology, including cryonics, cryogenics, and biostasis, subscribe to our YouTube channel or check out our website, linked down below. As for me, it's back to work. I don't have time for a nap just yet. See you in the next video.